A few other exciting things that I'll say just quickly. This is a rendering of the new East Campus Rec facility at the top uh, that was just most recently approved by the board uh, last two weeks ago. Uh, they are preserving some of the historical significance in the new design of the East Campus Rec so that it will preserve some of the history of the, the facility that goes all the way back to old FFA convention days as many of you in the room will remember. We are also working to build new community center types of activities through the East Campus Union where we hope to open that up back to more of an eating facility like it used to be for the campus. Um, that other picture is a rendering of the new AGR house, uh, expected to be constructed on the south side of Holdridge. I'm an AGR, I'm great, glad to see that happening. Uh, my father-in-law and my brother-in-law were both AGRs in that house. So that development is significant in that it is going to spur forward some new development on the south side of our campus, including the blocks to the west of the AGR facility where Valentino's currently sits. I'm meeting with those architects this afternoon to talk about what some of the plans are for retail and, and residential space uh, in that area. I met with the Dean of Libraries on Friday. She has a new proposal to think about C.Y. Thompson Libra Library on East Campus and in turning that into a student nerve center as compared to a traditional library where we could have things like a trading floor for students that are interested in trading agricultural commodities in that facility and move away from the traditional view of a library with books to a library that's a nerve center in the virtual world today that would create that kind of space for our students. The Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship students are going to develop a proposal for what that might look like as we move forward. Now I want to just show you a couple of slides in closing here in the interest of time because we need your help on these. Chancellor Perlman has put forward some rather ambitious goals for the university by 2017. He first stated these last fall in his State of the University address last September where he wants to see UNL go up in enrollment by 5,000 students in the next five years from 25,000 roughly today to 30,000 by 2017. He hopes to see an additional 165, 166 if you round it up, tenure track faculty, new tenure track faculty across campus, not retirement replacements, new, additional new faculty to support that student growth in important areas. So it's not just growing and, and putting more students on top of the, the existing infrastructure, it's growing the infrastructure as well. Increasing our graduation rate from 64% to 70%, that's a six-year graduation rate. Uh, we are about pe uh, a par with our peers, believe it or not. Um, more, more of our students graduate in six years than that. that. These are the ones that graduate from UNL. So there are students that go to another school, graduate from another school. It's closer to about 85 to 87% when you tally those, but that's still lower than it should be for the investment required in a four-year education in today's climate. And doubling of research expenditures from about 191 million today up to 300 million at the end of that five-year period along with the development of phase one of Innovation Campus. That is significant growth. And what I've challenged our INR faculty and staff and community with are these numbers because today, if you look across the areas of study that we represent and our departments and our units and our majors, we have about 3,000, a little north of 3,000 total students, undergraduate and graduate combined, across all areas of agriculture. CASNR, College of Ag Sciences and Natural Resources, fall of 2011, all-time record high enrollment in the history of the university not just since 1981, but in the history of the university, all-time record enrollment. Many universities, the key ones around the country, are seeing surges in their enrollment in agriculture, and you need to understand that, because the opportunities are outstripping the, the availability of, of qualified graduates. So we're seeing that growth happen, and we're certainly very pleased to see it happen here. There's been a huge effort on the part of the state and the agricultural industries in the state to support that kind of growth, because many of you will remember five or six years ago when we were almost at an all-time low in enrollment in CASR. And that to see that turnaround that fast is phenomenal. 
Um, I have given our folks the goal of raising that number to 4,200 by 2017. And you can do the math. That's a substantial increase in the number of students that we expect to see in our population. More, proportionally more in the graduate ranks than in the undergraduate ranks, but significant in both in terms of increased numbers of enrollments. We gave the units and the majors about a month and a half ago targets for them to shoot at to grow that enrollment based on what we saw the trends being in those majors, based on what we thought our capacity was for those majors in order to achieve those kinds of numbers. And you'll see some in there that are quite large. I'm an animal scientist. I don't see any reason why animal science in the state of Nebraska and at the University of Nebraska should have less than 450 to 500 students if we're the number one commercial red meat producing state in the United States. So they're obviously a, already our largest major. We expect them to continue to lead um, in that growth uh, that they, they've had a very good growth in the last several years. So, so this gives you some idea of how we expect to see that happen, how we expect to see it occur, and the units are going to be taking on those challenges. Now I just want to close by introducing uh, this gentleman to you. Some of you will remember $20 million gift from Paul Engler. I mentioned the Engler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program a few minutes ago and that they would be taking on this challenge of the library and what could we do differently with the library. That is a huge, huge benefit for us. Having someone step up and give a gift like that to enable students, this is a student-directed gift, not a research-directed gift, a student-directed gift, gives a jump start to our programs that is hard to measure. It's very hard to put a dollar value on what that does for your programs. And, and we've seen that happen. We have 56 students currently enrolled in that program as a minor, uh, Mark Gustafson, was the original director that was appointed to that about now almost two years ago. June will be two years ago to, to get the program up and running. He's done a phenomenal job of that. Uh, we recently brought on board, effective January 1st, Dr. Tom Field to become that Engler director and chair um, in July. He joined us on campus in January. Some of you have seen him out and about already. Um, Tom is, is known as one of the very best university educators in the agricultural sciences anywhere in the world. And I'm not saying that, uh, understating it. He is an absolutely phenomenal undergraduate teacher, instructor, and mentor for students. And I expect we're going to see great benefit uh, from bringing him here. I'm going to close just with this one slide. And I'll predecess it with this one, precede it with this one. Some of you have heard me talk a lot about how we need to become more globally engaged. And you hear things like Global Water for Food Institute. If you hear President Belkin out in the state, he talks about doubling the number of international students at the University of Nebraska and about global engagement and how important that is for our students. I will tell you that I don't believe that we can meet the targets ahead of us globally if we don't do this. If we totally look insularly at ourselves within Nebraska and equip ourselves within Nebraska, which we absolutely are going to do, we're going to absolutely equip ourselves within Nebraska, but we don't look globally outside that, we're not going to be able to meet these targets. It's also incumbent upon us to export what we do in know-how and export our students in terms of what we do and understanding the rest of the world as well because that's the world they're going to face long term. Are you with me on that? These are Brazilians. This January started just a couple of months ago. We had uh, around 30 undergraduate Brazilian students from across Brazil come to the University of Nebraska. All but a few of them are here at UNL. There's about four, I think, at UNO as part of a new program that President Dilma Rousseff, the President of Brazil, started uh, last fall called Science Without Borders. What do you think Dilma Rousseff's worried about in Brazil? Booming economy and phenomenal growth in Brazil. I've been to Brazil nine times in the last three and a half years. My previous job I was there seven times, so two of those are with UNL. They have a phenomenally growing economy, phenomenally tied to agriculture. 
and I think many of us recognize that. What's their shortage? Their shortage is human capital infrastructure for the next generations that are ahead of them in science, technology, engineering, mathematics in the STEM fields. So this Science Without Borders program that Dilma started where they intend to send 70,000 Brazilian students abroad in the next three years, heavily targeted toward U.S. and European universities, both undergraduate and graduate students, is based on filling that infrastructure gap with a desire to send many of these, these undergraduates who are here now back for graduate degrees. JB and I happened to be in Brazil when, when Zoma made that announcement. Dilma made that announcement last August. We teed ourselves up to be the, the premier U.S. university to receive these students. We have about five times more than any other university in the U.S. in this initial cohort. The largest university behind us has five. We have almost 30 here. About half, a little under half of those are ag students in vet med, in food science, in food engineering. Uh, the rest are all in engineering. Kind of tells you what they're, they're targeting, if you will. So these kinds of programs are going to be tremendously important as we move forward. Um, this is what we are doing currently around the world. These are new relationships that we have started in the last three years. I won't go into them, but you can see where they're at. Brazil, India, China, Africa, where many of these, these uh, challenges are going to lie ahead for us. Not just in research, also in education, also in extension. Rick's here from extension, and the, the work we're doing in Afghanistan is almost solely around extension and adult education for equipping agriculture in that part of the world. So we see this as a huge part ahead for us and what we're doing, and we hope you'll help us support that uh, as we move forward. I've kept you long. I'm sorry about that. I could talk for like five days about this kind of stuff, and many of you know that. Um, but I hope it's given you kind of an overview of where we are. It is tremendously exciting times for us. I just, but uh, every day I get up and I just say, batten down the hatches because here we go. And that's the way I hope it's going to be for a long time. Thanks for your support of the university. Um, due to the time, um, we're not going to take any questions from the group, but he did uh, agree to stay for a few minutes. Yeah. If you got uh, some one-on-one -on -one questions, he'll be available to take those. Okay? Uh, those that have a day job need to get back to work on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank we'll you. see you next month. Thank you.